making of Newark's riot actually begins a full generation before the riots actually hit. You know, I think we often mistakenly believe that it's natural that the inner cities be problematic and the suburbs be pristine in the United States, but um, it wasn't really so much God or nature that decided that, it was human decisions. Mainly through federal housing, transportation policy. Newark was destined to become a city mainly of poor people, mainly of black people, where more and more upwardly mobile whites would be encouraged to actually leave the city. After World War II, and certainly throughout the 50s, the whole image of the suburbs was pushed. You haven't arrived until you get to the suburbs, until you have your backyard, until you have your front yard, maybe two cars. You know, suburban tracks were, were subsidized by the federal government, you know, and the highways were subsidized by the federal government. 1945 until really into the 70s, the suburbs were white territory thanks to government action. It was not just white flight, it was also white people taking advantage who wouldn't of very uh, advantageous lending policies. These things had not been available before the war to a wide segment of Americans. They were not available to black people. You had the bank redlining under Roosevelt. Actually created maps where they literally drew red lines around a block with the presence of just one black person or one Jewish person would be enough to literally redline a block on the map, which meant there would be no mortgages given on those blocks. Newark is written off by the people who are are making these decisions. So they're really saying that Newark is not a good place for the federal government to invest. The suburbs are. Blockbusting real estate developers have busted up blocks because you know one black family might move in, scare tactics to get whites to sell cheap and then sell high to the blacks who moved in. The pitch was, hey, you know, these color people are moving in, you, you better sell now before your, your house value goes all the way down. And you get these people just to get scared, they'd sell their house low. But then those blacks who moved in weren't getting any bank loans, they wouldn't get any insurance on those homes, so that led to conditions which deterioration of much of the wood stick housing that uh, Newark had. So it was, you know, <laughs> disgusting but fascinating from an economic point of view. When I grew up in the 50s, I can recall in my neighborhood, there were always places where people can get pretty decent jobs. and establish yourself, have some kind of stability economically. Throughout the 50s, as many of these companies, they moved to southern New Jersey or southern United States until finally, you know, we're at the point where, uh, you know, companies just, global monopoly capitalism just will take it wherever, it, you know, they can make the most money. So, here you are a bunch of black folks up here looking for jobs in the industrial sector. Suddenly they got here and there was nothing here. It was like an old bait and switch route. All of those led to conditions that resulted in you know, poor housing, and poor health care, and less job opportunities, which were why people felt disenfranchised, they were destabilized economically, and all of those things were what led to Newark in 67, or Detroit in 67, or, or Watts. 